Good morning. Edie is off to, oh my gosh, I think this parrot on my camera. So Edie's off to a birthday party. I don't know why I said good morning because it's actually afternoon. But yeah, she's going to a birthday party. Bowling and then pizza. Bowling and pizza express. I said it first. No, <laughs> Just kidding. You look so cute. My back still hurts. From what? From yesterday. Really? Yeah, I got a massive dent to my back. Remember? Oh. Yeah. I came down. I do remember. Because you jumped off a bed or something, right? No. I did a handstand. Right. And it hurts when I lay down. Does it? Yes. It's a sad situation, Edie. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> Does it? Yes. Look, Edie, there's like porridge or something on my camera. Look at it there. Or banana, or I don't know Edie. what it is. Yeah. Right. Apparently, according to this, we're going to get there one minute before. Are you excited for this? Yeah. Did Daddy put, do that or did I just do that? The gates just opened and I can't remember if I picked up the thing or not. Anyway, it is mad hot today. It's so weird. I un <laughs> Can you just get out and fix the gate? Just mm -hmm. open the gate. We had like a thunderstorm and one of our... Oh my gosh, now it's closing again. No! But my back still hurt. Oh, that's sad. Well, you should learn your lesson and not um, jump off beds, right? I didn't jump off a bed. I did a handstand because oh. I had hiccups all day. <laughs> so, I, so I tried to get rid of them. But I, my, this that is the wall. This is crazy. my back. Oh my gosh. I have like no petrol. I mean, I have enough to get there. has won 50 tickets and now she's playing this I was just saying you won 50 tickets right are you gonna flat press start she wants to play with her friend right I've got a heartwarming story that's gonna make you feel all fuzzy inside. Do you remember about five years ago, Amelia had this toy called Branky Bear and she was obsessed with it and then she lost it and she was really upset about it and we had bought it in this little shop in Galway um, so there was no way we were gonna get it again. You couldn't get it on Amazon, it wasn't available online. So I kind of said it in a video hoping that somebody would be able to help me find it. And then somebody did find it and actually found out where the thing actually was online. Got in touch with the person who, the shop that had sold it or something like that and we somehow managed to get one. But then in that meantime, Amelia actually had, we'd actually found the Blanky Bear as well. Um, so I gave her back the actual original one. But in here is the one that we'd actually uh, replaced. This is the baby blanky bear. It's still in its wrapper because I never opened it. And um, Amelia was so upset that it was lost and I was so thankful that the community came together and helped us track down this little bear. Someday when Amelia's a lot older, I don't know, maybe on her 21st birthday or maybe on her wedding there, I don't know when, but someday I'm going to give her this. Um, and maybe she can give it to her kid or something like that. You know what I mean? I think it's so cool. Um, the, the, the story of this little blanky bear. But this story, 
is not about Blanky Bear. This story is about somebody else who had that exact same problem. So it wasn't a Blanky Bear, it was an Andrea. So I got this email from this woman um, in the Shetland Islands and her child um, loved the little Andrea toy and it became the child's toy. Some of you may already know this, but right before Andrea was born, I wrote a book called A Friend of My Own because I felt like Amelia and Edie had their little friendship on because they were like Irish twins, you know, they were so close together. And then we had Alessia who was kind of like, on her own and she wanted her own little friend like Emilia had Edie and Edie had Emilia. So the idea was that the story how Alessia was being left out and then we got pregnant and then Andrea came and that was going to be her friend of her own. I got these little toys made up so when you got the book you got the little Alessia toy and the Andrea toy. We did a tour, we sold them and that was it and here we are four years later and she emails in and says hey look my kid's lost his toy and I've looked around and I can't get it anywhere and the child's really upset and you know the child was in hospital and the child had it in her hospital as their comfort thing. The child was at a wedding, had it at its wedding. Like the child's just loved this little toy and now it's gone and she can't replace it. And she thought like, is there any chance? I don't know. Do, do you have any more of them for sale or anything? And then over here is where I have my Great Cat Nap. It's the first book I wrote, The All My Friends Are Invisible Hardback and The All My Friends Are Invisible Paperback. And then the last friend of my own, which I actually have with the little Dre Dre in here. And I thought, what a perfect way for me to be able to pay it forward. That at a time when Amelia was really upset about losing her blankie bear, um, the community came together and you guys tracked down and found me blankie bears, you know I know even though Amelia did find afterwards, but it was amazing how people did that and I thought I can do it now. I can pay it forward. Um, if you didn't see the book, this is what it's about uh, There's Edie <laughs> We need to we need to reproduce this but Edie, Dre Dre, Alessi and Amelia, you know And she had her friend of her own and then you get the two little toys and the little book and all that stuff how cool is that, that I'm able to um, send this off now to the Shetland Islands and that little kid is going to get re reincar reincarnated, re uh, reacquainted with that little toy. And that's, I don't know, I think that's cool, like, you know, that, I was able, that I'm able to do that. You know, it's nice when you're given something and then you have your little gratitude tour, you know, where you get to actually be able to pass things on or hand things back or help another person out or something, you know. So I thought I would share it with you because it made me feel happy. It made Izzy, who was speaking to her, feel happy, and um, it's a nice story. Okay, guys, I'm back from Hollywood Bowl. I actually stayed for a little bit with Edie because um, they didn't go straight in. They were doing those arcade games. Um, I was trying to film Edie going into the balls, the one where the balls drop. Sorry, Jonathan's leaf blowing outside. That sound is the most annoying sound ever, but <laughs> he's obsessed. <laughs> he's obsessed with keeping his grass alive. <laughs> anyway, um, oh my gosh, that was so scary. So anyway, I, I, not the Hollywood Bowl thing. <laughs> I was there with Edie and I wanted to film her when the balls dropped, but then it didn't work and then her friends went in with her and I didn't want to film when they were in there with her but she eventually did get to do it. It just took a really long time because she was waiting for her friends one to work and then theirs didn't and then hers didn't work and then she had to like get her money back and then try again so it was a whole thing but what was scary was that when I was going, oh I went, to, I wanted to make beds. Oh anyway. <laughs> I need to sit down for a second. So I was on the, this has never happened to me because I'm so good about putting petrol in my car. Like I do it like religiously, like anytime I'm like a quarter of a tank full, I put it in my car. And, hey guys. Um, so I'm driving on the motorway because I had to bring Edie to the birthday party. I saw that I had like the teeniest little bit above the red left and I was like yeah I think I should be fine to get home I've never actually driven with it that low before though and so I start heading home and then I'm in the middle of the motorway and it just goes to red and I could not for the life of me figure out how to get the miles up on my like 
dashboard thing because I know that you can see how many miles exactly you have left and then I would have known but I couldn't do it. I was trying all the different settings and I was like panicking massively. I rang Jonathan and I was like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know, but what if the car just stops in the middle of the motorway? Um, turns out I had like 30 miles left because it just went on red, but I didn't know. I thought maybe that was it. Like when it hits red, the car just stops because I've never hit red in my life before. I've always, like being really good about filling it up um and i just don't i don't know why but i just have oh no you are so cute what she's doing oh i love when they do this thing this thing is so cute oh you didn't even see me do it it's what she had both her little paws and was like doing that with her face anyway um guys it was so stressful i was so stressed out i was like <sighs> I'm not gonna make it. And then I got to the petrol station and it was fine and I had like plenty left. I, I could have driven. Jonathan was like, you could drive like to Gatwick and back and be absolutely fine. But I didn't know. So anyway, it's fine. I survived. I feel like I need to drink now and I don't even drink. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, that was so scary. But anyway, my car is filled up. Filled up? My car is filled up now. Um, oh no, am I out of hippos? I think I am. Those are my favorite. I have ice cream, but I don't really want ice cream. See, this is what I do instead of having a stiff drink, I just eat a little hippo instead. It's absolutely fine. There's my baby. I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> I thought I was never gonna see you again. Yeah. Gosh, that noise it just make, it really makes it really makes me worry. What's that? That's a worm, Alessia. Put it back outside. It needs to go in the ground. Oh, but I can Who? What? Can two. Two? What's that? That's a sail. Uh, that's part of the worm. No. Did he break? No. Let's see. I've been looking out for him in this. Okay, all right. I think he broke a little bit, but he's still alive, so let's put him in the ground. Um, you need to find some dirt for him, look. He will like this. They like dirt. Oh no, we don't play with those kinds of things inside, Alessia. But, but they're they're my, outside animals. But they're my snail friend. Unless Andrea has chocolate. <laughs> he just has little biscuits because we've got no and brunch I, bars and left. The snail was watching them. Amelia. Oh, sorry, you can't. Amelia remembered the snail was watching the computer. Okay. This is a snail. Here you guys. One each. I want the first bit. One each. I one biscuit the first each. Bit. Not I one packet. The first bit. Oh, sorry. It's the same. I want the first bit. It's the same. It's a bit, not a Guys, I nearly didn't make it home. Where is it, Letty's party? And what theme is it? Tomorrow. What theme is it? Um, just party. Please be friends. Please be friends. Please be friends. No, it's not phone. It's just. It can be Halloween if you want. You can go as a Halloween thing if you want to. Why? You can dress up if you want. I want to go in my Halloween costume. Well, maybe not your actual Halloween costume. Maybe like another Halloween costume. Oh, we got Halloween. We've got loads. No, we've got loads of little witch costumes. No, if you want to go as a witch. Oh yeah, and we have a tiger costume. Yeah, we've got loads. So I had some. Um, I had a happy hippo and some Reeses. Now I feel a little bit refreshed. <laughs> but I had to update you guys. So the coffee machine, the frother is kaput. Like it's just not working. I tried everything. I tried resetting it. I tried the maintenance thing. I tried cleaning it. I tried following all of the like 10 minute operation thing that you're supposed to do to like clean it out properly twice. Didn't work. 
it's broken it just doesn't work so I have to um, email them and either send it back or whatever they need to sort it out because it's like what two three weeks old so I don't think it's even a month that we've had this coffee machine maybe a month but in the meantime I figured out a hack and I just feel like I need to share it with you guys I mean it's a bit of an expensive hack but it just so happens that I already had it um, but I so I got rid of our old coffee machine because obviously that was not working anymore and our frother um, but I still had a hot chocolate machine or a hot chocolate maker this um, hotel chocolat one I put my milk in there with no hot chocolate obviously with no chocolate and it works it made me the best because I made one um, honestly this has been like affecting me I know that sounds ridiculous but it has I think because um, my frothy coffees are like just symbolize so much to me like I love them I look forward to them they're like my little my treat in the day like I just love them and I couldn't have one and I was made like yesterday I ordered the Starbucks and then it came with no froth and I was so upset and I just it it's ruined like coffee on me like I don't get any enjoyment anymore that's my popcorn for my movie night Um, she said that we were going to have popcorn. That's for me? Okay. It's my movie night. It's my popcorn. Why would you think that I would make some for you? Because <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here, Amelia. Please, can you open the gate for me though? Because I have no hands free. <laughs> and the problem, it's me. It's me. Can you please open the gate for me? Oh. Amelia? Yes, yeah, sir. Anna. Mama. Yeah, why are you eating? Yeah, like, I don't like popcorn. What are you watching? Monster Hunt. Uh, let's see how you guys... Do you not guys make a mess. Scared, um, look after her, okay? Love you. Yes, Do you want chocolate as well? Hot chocolate. No, not hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. No. Alexa, I was like, please may you pass? Those nuts. On the floor, like I'm on the floor. Guys, tomorrow is the first school night in two weeks. This is your last night of half term. It's Sunday tomorrow. We're having popcorn. Shh. It's Sunday. We go to school on Sunday. No, tomorrow is our last. Like tomorrow's the last day, but tonight is the last like proper night. Do you know what I mean? Because you get to enjoy yourselves tonight, but then tomorrow it's early to bed. So no, it's not school tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. Oh, isn't that nice of Edie sharing her? The contents of her bag. Yeah. I mean, at least it's because I have a heart. Oh, by the way, I forgot to oh. tell you guys. Um, Edie got dropped back by a friend. Well, like a friend's parent. So that's why I didn't have to go and um, collect her. She actually, um, I obviously brought her there. But she could have gone to her friend, like the birthday girl's house and been brought there all together. Um, but I asked her and she said she wanted me to, I gave her the option, she said she wanted me to come and that's why I stayed for a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, she went to Pizza Express, I think, afterwards. No, they had a power cut, she had to go somewhere else. It was kind of a 
big disaster like a little bit because they had a power cut three hours before the party they called and they were like we can't do the party <laughs> um so that must have been a bit of a nightmare but anyway um right i think we're gonna watch handmaid's tale i'm really not sure oh i need to do my laundry hold on i need to put this in the dryer i need to swap everything out Gonna get some laundry done. This is dry, I think. So let's put that here for now. Get rid of this. And that is all Anna um, filmed yesterday when she ran out of petrol, <laughs> diesel. Hopefully, she didn't put petrol in the car. <laughs> and yes, I do like leaf blowing all the leaves because, you know, we have a lovely um, property that's like surrounded by trees. Um, which is great, you know what I mean? But in the winter time, they just like shed all over my grass. And if you don't stay on top of it, what happens is that next year, you start getting rid of leaves and you just got lumps of missing grass all over the place. Or even at the front where we have the stones, if you don't get rid of it, they, they just deteriorate into mush and it just becomes a huge job in like Jan, Feb, whenever, or whenever like spring is coming along and you're trying to like, you know what I mean, um, clean things up, you know? Um, it's like the downside of like, well, it's not downside. For me, it's like I quite enjoy it. But if you have like a large plot um, with lots of like trees and land and stuff like that, you, you got to take care of it, <laughs> you know? Uh, I quite like it. I quite like having to, you know, do the thing, you know? Because it's not real. It's not like an actual farm where I actually have to do things, you know? It's just more maintenance on a large kind of plot. But it's, it, I enjoy it. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.